your mind and you're then going to draw it out on the tree with your finger doesn't matter which one but i like the index finger but whichever one whichever hand you use your left-handed right-handed your dominant hand and dominant finger i like the index finger you're going to draw it out on the trunk of the tree all right and then you're going to knock three times stand back sit down wait honor listen those are the three steps wait that means wait clear your mind the trees are is hard for them to speak in your language to begin with and the language you're, you're going to get is going to be very vibrationally based so we need to wait honor the amount of time it takes and listen the listen is quite different than what you think it's going to be and is actually the hardest part of tree communication methodology. Don't worry, I'll get to it in a second. So once you draw this elemental sign, you know, for the tree with your finger on the trunk of the tree, knock three times, sit down, wait on or listen, all right? I would like for you to then, and if you're not a visual person, I forgot to talk about that, um, you can just draw out the symbol, like say on one of these type of boards, you know, or on a piece of paper and look at it, gaze upon it for a bit before you draw the symbol on the tree. Some people just aren't incredibly visual, so they don't like to try to visualize it in their mind before they draw it out. So just do it on a piece of paper or a notepad and let your eyes gaze upon it in the way that you would if you were a yogi. We call this the yoga gaze. People who know me have been around me a while see me do it, unfortunately, all the time. I'm a little bit out of it. So the yoga gaze is something that just happens when you're just really looking hardcore at something, but then you look beyond it and you stop looking at it. Your eyes are going in that direction towards it, but you're not really there, right? The yoga gaze is soft. You're not trying to hold your eyes open. It's not a struggle. You're simply focusing on whatever you're visualizing. In this case, it would be the symbol. And there's many ways to do it in your mind or on a piece of paper but then you're going to look at it on the tree and vision and draw it out with your finger and then just um follow those tracings of your finger energetically sometimes when i trace an ogham alphabet on the tree i like to imagine that gold is coming out of my finger this really works for me and gold light as if my finger has golden ink in it it's a golden pen and i'm drawing a little symbol on the tree and it's left a little golden light alphabet right there on the tree and then i just look at it that's it i look at the symbol that i drew on the tree all right please don't pull out your markers please don't cut trees or draw carvings on them they really don't like that <laughs> had to make that really clear if i'm going to teach this class but just imagine that there's a gold drawing imagine it please don't actually do it um, you need a lot of reverence to work with trees, a lot of patience. It isn't going to happen right away. Um, sometimes the best way I could explain this would be the first time that I, I watched, I think it was one of the Harry Potter movies. Um, it was a little bit like this and I could see the trees coming to life, but some of them were going through some very dark times. Um, more so when I watched the Narnia movies. I identified very strongly with that. It was almost as if the trees were in a very dead space because of lack of reverence to the energy and life that trees represent. The trees just kind of stopped talking. It was as if they were dead. And then when people started to show honor and reverence at the end of Narnia, did you notice that the trees lit up? They started talking. They were magical. They were easy to communicate again. Um, well, trees don't talk to us because number one, we don't try. Number two, we can't quiet our own minds and our own distractions enough. Number three, we're not reverent. We don't give the patience or the honor enough to just sit there, wait, honor, and listen. We don't do that, right? Okay. <laughs> oh, Virumu. He said, ouch, I carved my name into the top of the tree when I was six. You were six. I'm sure the trees you know, understood that. <laughs> we know now what we didn't know then, right? Okay, another thing that you can do while you're waiting and honoring the tree, 
to show your honor. Um, a lot of people will prostrate themselves before a tree. If you're not worried about looking weird, go for it. But my favorite way to honor a tree is to place my face against it and listen. I literally will put, you've seen pictures of me doing this. When I went to Australia, I was just mesmerized by the trees and I spent so much time with these ancient trees with my entire face just plastered up against them. I wasn't hugging them or anything, but there were two ways that I would do that. Ear to the tree or back to the tree. Trees like to connect heart to heart. You won't last long enough if you hug a tree, if you sit back against the tree and you get still enough, and if um, you've made yourself comfortable enough in form, um, you might be able to connect to its vibration, the heart of the tree. Don't worry, we'll talk about that momentarily. Um, but first you need to connect with the elements who are communicating with the tree in that space and time. So what I mean by that is if you've ever sat by a tree and you've gotten really still, okay, um, you'll notice that there will always be an element that is utilized to connect you more deeply with the tree. For me, it's always breath like the wind, air. I, I love that element. Um, and water. You know, I tend to talk to trees that are sitting by water, and even if I don't, it'll start raining or dew will fall from the tree, or have you ever noticed like suddenly wind works with tree for people that are a little bit more, you know, um, Veda in their Ayurvedic elements, the wind will um, come through a lot, right? Um, I'm more Pita Veda in my Ayurvedic, um, whatever they call it, um, your, your thing with Ayurveda, they give you like a classification system for your body and mind type, your, your physiological and mental components. Um, so I get a little bit more air element, wind element coming, and that's because I'm deeply connected to my breath. So I, knowing that I am deeply connected with the element of, of um, air, I will sit and I will focus on my breath. And that's unique for each of you. All right, so for people who are connected deeply to the element of wind, you will need to focus on your breath. And that is really, really simple. So in, um, what's the type of meditation where you focus on your breath? Vipassana or Vipassina, depending upon your pronunciations. You will say rising when you breathe in and falling when you breathe out. That's it. And then you will notice your breath rising and falling, rising and falling. So when you do that, it's just in your mind, say rising, now falling, rising, falling. That's the only thing you say if you're a breath oriented person, right? If you are a water based person, you need to be blessing the water that is either near the tree or on the tree. That's really easy to do. Just I bless the waters that nourish this sacred tree and I honor the elements and the earth below the air above the water that nourishes that's it always mention above and below in this blessing that's it you could do it whatever way you want but honor the above honor the below and honor the actual element that is nourishing the tree particularly if it is earth or water because both of those nourish the tree all right if you notice that a tree is in the city next to a concrete its roots probably aren't nourished as well as it likely should be and you can just feel that or notice that by looking at it you want to work on both earth and water there are so many times um in my classes one-on-one -on -one with my students that um, in helping them determine water, they'll say, well, how do I work with trees that just feel like they're dead because they're in the middle of a city? This is the way. They need water. They need sunlight. Most of the time they're going to get that. Um, but you can work with that if you feel that they're in a dense forest or if bigger trees are covering them, you can work with the, the element of light and sun. Um, if you do utilize the element of light and sun, you can use the phrase or mantra, Ram. Ra, Rama, 
rum. Another thing that you can do is ask the tree to give you a vibrational mantra for the element that it needs. And now if you're going to do that, you need to be somewhat mastered in trusting your own intuition. Okay. So, um, what else do I want to go with, go with, with that? So one of the, one of the ways I'll, I'll share with you a story about my connection with the element of air and wind. Um, when I was, I, uh, when I first started waking up spiritually, so this is like, you know, six or so between the ages of six and eight, I got very interested in trees. Um, it, it was one of my first connections that, you know, with the exception of angels was trees and animals. And I had, you know, we lived on a lot of property. We, we lived in the middle of nowhere, you know, in, in the Southern United States with on about, you know, probably 25 acres and we gardened and, and planted on most of it. But for the acreage that wasn't utilized in the front yard where we weren't planting on anything, um, the trees were huge and there was this massive oak tree um, kind of to the top left front of my, of my property. And, you know, I would get up in that tree um, and just sit there for hours and I would wait until the winds would get really strong and I would breathe and feel the winds and, and I wanted to call them in because I wanted the thrill of moving with the tree. Well, have you guys ever done that when you're little kids? Trees love that, <laughs> right? Have you ever just held on to it and just swayed with the wind? And after a while, when you're doing that, you feel like you are the tree. It's incredible. You still do it? Oh, that's goals, girl. Goals. You've just given me ideas, but I'm nowhere near that physically to be climbing trees right now, but I got goals. So... <laughs> Um, I would, and it wasn't just like climbing to like the bottom or the middle. You, Indira knows what I'm talking about. You'd be at the top where the branches are a little thin, and you'd be hanging on and swaying and probably freaking your 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 mom out. Um, well, I got to the point where I, I I didn't notice, but I had my ear to the tree, and I could feel its vibration so deeply that I forgot I was human. I thought I was the tree, just swaying and swaying and swaying. And one day, I sat out there for four whole hours, my mom literally came and then sent my dad to come get me. And he was like, are you ever going to get out of this tree? Your mom's super worried. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I was just here for five minutes. These things will happen with trees. Time will just fly. So connect with the elements who are also communicating with the tree. If you're working with earth, all right, and you notice that a tree that you want to communicate in your area or location is um, planted in a space where you know its its roots aren't very nourished with the earth. Maybe you want to bring some nourishing, dark, deep, you know, fertile soil, and use it as an offering. Maybe you want you might want to bring some crystals as an offering. All right, um, whatever it is that you feel, whether it be mineral, you know, crystal crystalline uh, minerals, any other types of minerals. Um, trees do prefer raw crystals and minerals, not um, what do you call it, polished. Um, you may want to bring earth from another location where the, where the earth is kind of deeper and more rich and nourishing for the tree, just as an offering and place it right there upon its open roots, because a lot of the trees that aren't very nourished have more open roots, if you've noticed that. All right. Um, you may want to also bring water in a jar, um, a lot, a good amount of it. Don't just tease the tree with water, like water its roots. One of the deepest ways that you can connect with the elements that trees need is to water their roots. But ask first, don't just assume. I would like for you to wait, to honor and to listen. And then if you feel that that tree needs to work with a certain element for its nourishment, and its health and its life, go ahead and honor the tree in that way. Okay, so many um, ways that you can honor the tree. You can bring um, your ash from your incense stick, as um, Lana just recently put in the chat for you, essential oils. But again, with essential oils, 
wait, <laughs> honor, and ask. All right. Yes, I dilute mine with water as well because I've noticed that not a lot of the trees want pure essential oils on their roots for reasons. Um, they don't if they if they had those flowers around their roots, they would have them already. They don't always need them. Okay. Um then from that point on, I would like for you to intuit or allow whatever words you want to use, allow and intuit um, what the tree wants to give to you in its sound vibration. And again, you need to ask, put your ear over its trunk and ask for its unique sound. And again, wait, <laughs> honor, and listen for it. This could take minutes to hours. It may not happen at all, and then you may have to come back another day. Um, uh, all of that is uh, pretty common stuff for learning to talk to trees, all right? Um, step number seven is to merge with the tree. Before you do that, please ask permission. They don't like it when you just start to visualize it and do it. But when you ask and honor and listen, it'll tell you if it wants you to do that or not. And it's really simple. You're just going to visualize the tree and its unique parts, the roots being your feet, the trunk of it being your trunk of your body, its branches being your arms, its leaves being your head, your hair, your fingers, anything that you feel is a good way in your visualizations. And as you imagine that that tree is you, you will feel a certain breath happening between you and the tree. And it will move a little bit like this, kind of like a squeeze box or an accordion, like this within yourself. And you will suddenly feel that your stomach is the trunk and everything's moving. And then your breath will change because trees breathe mostly from their leaves and their branches. That's just the nature of photosynthesis. Um, so you will feel a breath arising in this way next. All right. So breathe with the tree, merge with the tree in your visualizations. Don't do it before asking. Visualize it in the unique way I just um, suggested move with the tree if what i mean by that is if the wind moves it guess what you're a tree you're going along with that's why i gave you the example earlier all right if you're a tree and you're and the tree's moving this way so are you um if the tree is is not moving at all perhaps this is your opportunity to be in your stillness the element of air isn't working with that tree and that is an example for you to merge deeper into your stillness and let that tree be solid like an oak you know what I mean? Um, finally, once you do that, you will finally hear or vibrate as the tree. You will hear its vibration or you will feel it within you. So the nature mystics knew this. When Richard Jeffries, for instance, um, wrote the story of my heart, he's one of my favorite nature mystics, and that's um, just an incredible offering by him. He prayed to the trees and to earth and to the rivers, um, to any component of earth where he was um, in his nature worship. He didn't call it that, but that's the best way I can have to describe it to you. And he would essentially get so exhausted with being human. I don't know if you've ever felt that way right <laughs> anybody <laughs> um he would get so exhausted and, and he was this nature mystic was um kind of a really quaint man he was very feeble he had a pure, poor, pure poor immune system poor health his body wasn't strong he had no endurance he would go out walking after his working hours he was an 18 early 18th century mystic who was like an accountant all closed up in in this um you know building and uh, or someone's home probably and the trees would tempt him because he would open the windows it was the only um, breath of God that he said that he could have was to see out his window of his office and he would just 
strive to be out there and just desire to be out there in, in the only God that he knew, which was nature. And sometimes he would get so exhausted and sick with work and he, and he got paid very little. Nothing was really working. He wasn't healthy. Um, he didn't have love in his life. He didn't have anything. So he just got exhausted and he would go out and walk. He would walk for miles and miles and miles. And I know that not all of us can do that. So you do what you can. But walking actually calms down the mind. Why? Because you have no choice but to be in deep, rhythmic connection to the entire universe, not just yourself, but to every element of nature that exists around you in that moment. There's no choice. You have to breathe because you're out of breath. And the elements themselves will pull you into a deep rhythm with nature. So walk before you try this, all right? Even if it's just a little bit. If your body's not used to it and you're out of breath and you're trying to contain your breath, um, do what Richard Jeffries did. He would, he would walk until he was out of breath and he couldn't take it anymore. And then he would collapse upon a grassy knoll. And because he was too tired to think about how miserable he was in his life, he would easily merge with the deity that we call nature nature mystics knew that that nature was the ultimate deity they didn't call it god or god is just deity and then he would feel a rhythmic vibration and it would just overtake him and it felt so beautiful the first time that this happened to him that he wept i mean he didn't just the way he described it in the story of my heart he didn't just weep he wailed <laughs> um and it was like a release of pain but also like a deep invitation of love like he had never felt this kind of love so the only thing he knew how to do is just was just cry um so he did that for quite a amount of hours and um and then he spent many many days and weeks thereafter trying to get that same merging and and vibration of gaia back in his essence and it didn't immediately happen. So he would walk and walk and walk and walk and walk until he would exhaust himself and the body would have no choice but to, to turn the mind off and then it would happen again. And this is how this being um, awakened spiritually. That was his process, just that. <laughs> so from that point on, he found that he just he didn't just have to go to the grassy knoll where he would walk miles daily and exhaust himself to get to. But from that point on, he would feel that same vibration that Earth gave him when he merged with the soils and the lands there, and it would lead him deeper. He felt like it could fling him throughout time. And depending upon where he was walking and where he stopped, where he was in the city as well, nature would talk to him so trees do this trees are actually holders of the akash throughout all time that earth has ever been in existence even a brand new tree can talk to another tree through its root system if it's nearby and give you access to whatever period of time in your akash would be relevant to your healing right now this is how incredible they are. But you have to let it sound out its vibration, which means that you cannot be resistant to the idea of a mantra. Mm -hmm. Cannot be resistant because whatever that vibration is, you're going to hum it or speak it or sing it or say it in your mind, whatever vibrates with you or resonates with you insofar as that. And you're going to do this for a long period of devoted time. This is the honoring. You've already done the waiting part. Now we're at step two, the honoring. If you can devote to the tree in that way and honor it with by sounding out its vibration in your heart, in your mind, out loud, whatever you want to do, the tree will begin to listen to you, right? And once you form that connection, you heard its vibration, you waited long enough, and then you honored the tree by sounding out the vibration in whatever way you resonated in. And you did that for long enough, the tree's gonna listen to you. And now here's where we're gonna get somewhere. I've had taught plenty of you how to listen to trees. 
but here's where we're actually going to get further. All right. When the tree listens to you, it's going to tell you what season of life you're in. And what I mean by that is, well, it's going to tell you if you are in the summer of your heart, which is generally the most burning, catalyzing time an exciting time as well. The passions are out in your life. You're more creative during the summer. You're more in your masculine process during the summer. You're typically in a great space in the summer. Most people are. It's going to tell you whether or not you're in the fall. You're kind of still active and excited about things, but kind of winding down and preparing to go deeply inward for the winter of your soul, right? When you're in the fall, you're in flow. You can remember that fall is flow and the tree will show you um, different periods of time in your life where you need to fall more into flow or you are into flow. If you need it or you are it, it's going to show you either a visual or a thought process. Um, this is where you can open your mind back up again and whatever you begin to imagine actually in the mind will be what the consciousness of the tree is clairvoyantly presenting to you and you don't need to be clairvoyant i hear your question already you don't need to see things this is about letting your imagination wander and wonder wonder and wonder the two w's in order to do that you need to wonder what the tree could show you show you so ask i wonder what season of my soul i'm in all right you need to also wander around a little bit, wander and wonder. So wonder by asking what season I'm in, ask the tree, it'll show you. It could be a memory, a childhood memory that affects your beliefs now, um, that resonates with you now. Maybe some pain needs to come up. Oaks are really good at that. It could be, if you're working with a spring, you could feel like you're about to go upon a rebirth journey. You know, if you're working with the winter, you could feel that you're deeply silent and withdrawn and kind of in more inward and perhaps not paying attention to teachings and your own practices within you and very, very quiet, kind of calm, very still, right? The fall is more of a flowing, grieving moment typically than the winter, but if people don't allow themselves to be still, the tree will invite you into the winter that is within your very soul. And it'll do so by making you burst into tears. It will literally ask you and invite you into grief because you can't be still if you haven't fully let fall flow with grief. You literally can't be still. I've met people like that and they need their external world to be so full they just never stop if you ever met anyone like that they're like well in order to feel good in my life i need to um my my job everything is i, I need to go work i need to work a lot i mean need, need a lot of goals then i'm gonna go work out and then i'm gonna go home and i'm gonna completely organize my entire house and then i'm gonna this and then like that and now it's my relationship we better make sure we had a date night this week and we better make sure that like people like that have not grieved you need to sit with a tree you need to ask have you experienced the fall? Because you cannot meditate or sit with a spiritual practice or open up to your abilities if you have not experienced the fall and the flow of autumn in your very soul, all right? So this is how you work with trees. You ask them what season you are in currently and what season you need to be in. Very, very simple. Very, very simple practice, okay? Um, I need a break because I've drank too much Chinese tea. I will be right back. Maybe perhaps go get yourself some water and go put your hand on the tree. I'll be back in two minutes. 